Hi guys, Steve here. On this video I'll be unboxing the MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio 11GB graphics card. I'll start off by showing you the box. It has a new real-time ray tracing technology for reflections and real lighting effects. An 11GB of DDR6 memory, which is a step up from a 1080 Ti's DDR5. Let's open it up and have a look inside. It's the very first time I'm opening this. Let's take the foam off and see what we get. MSI envelope. Turn that right way. A user guide. Not sure what this cardboard thing is, maybe a drinks coaster. Some kind of Comic instruction book. As instruction books go. Spent a bit of time on that. A graphics card support bracket instruction. The driver discs. Thank you for buying MSI. Let's see what's in here. Power adapter. This graphic card needs two 8 pins plus a 6 pin to power it. Your support bracket. You screw this in under your graphics card to support some other weight. Don't think it really needs it, but I'm not too fussed on the designs on it. Don't like gold. Okay, let's get the big boy out. else left in the box. No, nope, that's it. That's it in its anti-static bag. Thought it'd be bigger than this to be honest. Can't see much in there so let's open it up. Baby. Not sure where I put stickers on the central fan, not the others. Not seen that before. I'll try and get these off. They look a bit fiddly, and I'll be back in a second. Okay, I've removed those. So let's have a better look at the card. It has 4,352 cores, the core clock speed is 1,755, the memory clock speed is 7,000, and it comes with 11 gig of DDR6 memory. It's a 3 fan GPU, with their special airflow fans. They've got little notches on them, it's supposed to give better airflow. As you can see, the middle and right one are bigger than the left, so you have to do that one smaller to fit the SLI bridge in that side. From here you can see the card's pretty chunky, it will take up three slots. It's got a huge heat sink that will dissipate more heat, therefore the fans won't have to spin so fast, making the card quieter. At the back you have three display ports, one HDMI and one USB Type-C port. On the front side you have an MSI logo, just turn this the right way, you get a better look at the huge heat sinks as well. And in the top right you can see it's power connectors, two 8 pin and a 6 pin. So you're going to need a good power supply. There's a front but you won't be seeing much of that as it'll probably butt up to the front of your case. Make sure yours is big enough if you're going to buy one because it's fairly long. Then you have a nice looking two way brushed aluminium backplate. It's got nice design vents cut into it and the MSI logo to the right. The backplate also helps to dissipate the heat. I'll go back to the front again because those white stripes so it's RGB lighting. You get one main bar over the top, then two smaller light strips underneath. 
and you get another two light strips at the back to light up your motherboard. And I'll go into the software and show you how those work now. Right, that's a card plugged into my computer. To be honest, the colours look a lot better in real life than they're doing this video. Here they look burnt out to white, so you can't really see them. This is it when it's on its default rainbow effect, but I'll get closer in to see if you can see it better. They look a little bit better here, but again they look washed out to white. The camera's not picking it up, but in real life it's really bright and vibrant colours. This is the MSI RGB lighting software and it's really easy to use. On the right you can see a preview of its current RGB setup. That's the default rainbow. And I'm going to go through some of the others to show you what they look like. The profile list is on your left. Just click which one you want to use. There's only a couple of multicolored effects. The others are single and you can select what colour you want to use in the bottom left. It runs really quiet. There's one it's idle and below 60 Celsius. The fan blade stops spinning to make it as quiet as possible. And only starts up again when you're gaming and it needs it. This one's a lightning effect. This is a wave effect. They were just a few. I prefer the multicolor effects a lot more. As for performance goes, I've only got a 1080p monitor, but as you'd expect, I can play every game on maximum everything. On a Division 2, as averaging about 94 frames per second, maximum over 115, and a minimum of 86. For COD, I was getting an average of 143 FPS, a max of 172, and a minimum of 119. As for Battlefield 5, the only game where you can see real-time ray tracing being used until Anthem comes out. I've enabled it, but you do get a performance hit having it on, and on this test I've turned everything up to Ultra. Picked a quiet spot where I'm not getting killed all the time. You can see the tree and building reflection in the water, and ray tracing reflects perfectly the surroundings around you. Here's an example of a truck being reflected in the water. You can also see the trees in the background and the sky. And that looks nice, but when I went down to check the reflections in the stream, you couldn't see anything. It's not reflecting anything that I can see. Don't know if the devs forgot to put that in. With all the graphic settings on Ultra and ray tracing on, I was getting an average of 80 to 90 frames a second. At best, I was getting 125 FPS and the lowest about 65 FPS. However, I kept getting some weird stuttering now and then, normally at the start of a game or when you spawn somewhere else, where the FPS went down to 15 and kept stuttering for a while. To show you how powerful this RTX 2080 Ti is, I ran a few time spy benchmarks on other graphics cards. The processor and RAM's a bit old as I've had my system for a while, and all that I've done is swap the graphics cards around. The first graphics card I tested is a fairly cheap Gigabyte Radeon RX 570 8GB, and that gave me an overall score of 3674. My old Asus ROG Strix GTX 1080 Ti overclocked with 11GB of DDR5 RAM 
That was a really good card and gave me a mark of 8,718. And my new MSI RTX 2080 Ti Gaming X Trio with 11 gig of DDR6 RAM gave me an overall benchmark score of 11,428, which is quite a lot better than a 1080 Ti, but then again it costs quite a bit more. And there you go guys, that's my new graphics card. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe if you've not already, and click the bell icon to get notified of when I upload next. There's links to other videos at the end, comment on what you would like to see. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you again. Goodbye!